Hey guys, there's been an awful lot going on on my channel lately, so I thought it was time to post a little video blog to fill you in. So, there's been a flurry of activity with starting half a dozen projects, probably have everybody totally confused. There is a reason for me doing that, a few reasons for me doing that. Uh, one, uh, I need to vacate our spare bedroom because we were going to have somebody staying with us. This summer, that's where I put all the sets that came in from New York, almost all predictors, uh, last fall. Those need to come down here, which means some of the stuff that's down here has to get out. Now, all those sets belong to one owner who's in New York. So, it's not like as I finish them, they're going to go away. I need to finish all of them, and they're all going to go away at once at some point. Now, that's another issue. They were dropped off by my buddy who lives in New York when he came to the Chicagoland area for the Vintage Computer Fest Midwest, which <laughs> apparently doesn't have any location or date set for this year yet. I've been checking their website periodically, signed up for the mailing list, checked out their Facebook page. There's nothing going on. So as things stand, it might not even happen this year, which means I might have those sets for a while or have to arrange an alternate means to get them safely back to New York. So, in other words, they're going to be here a while. Uh, it absolutely came down to it. I could rent a small 5x5 five five storage space and uh, probably pass the cost along to the owner to, to keep them all safe and sound. In fact, maybe, maybe I should have just floated that option to him right now. Uh, but I also wanted to put together a parts order because I know I have a bunch of interesting stuff coming up. and. Uh, so I, I talked about it recently. In addition to the, the order I showed recently, I ordered some other stuff. I got about 600 bucks worth of parts sitting around to finish about a dozen sets off. Predict isn't a whole mix of other stuff. So there's going to be a lot of activity going on on this channel over the next few months. Uh, let's see. I'm also going to, oh, the early television uh, convention is coming up. I think the first weekend in May. That's in Ohio, where I am going. Uh, I'm hoping to do a little bit of maybe some horse trading, maybe sell some stuff, donate some stuff, get some of this stuff out of here, in other words. Uh, speaking of trading, that Motorola VT73 I showed recently that I wanted to check out to see what the owner wanted to do with it. It turns out that after figuring out the, the amount of money he, he sunk into it to purchase it and what I would want to restore it, he decided not to. Uh, so I ended up giving him a discount on restoring the Westinghouse H223 in exchange for the TV, so it's mine now. Which works out well for me because um, I picked up the same set in St. Louis, the Motorola VT73 with the same color cabinet and all that. He's missing the cover for his. Whereas uh, I have a, a, a bezel that was modified uh, and my cabinet, or my, the cabinet for the one I got earlier, is in rougher shape. So the goal for now is to put w together one complete, really nice set. I'll hang on to the rest if I can find the bits and pieces I'm missing. Maybe they'll both get restored. But that's what ended up happening with that set. So it will get restored. You will see it. It seemed to spark a lot of interest. So <laughs> you'll be seeing that soon. Uh, I'm kind of itching to get to that one because it kind of works. Well, it turns on. I shouldn't say it kind of works. It turns on at. It's, it's, it's a far cry from being fully operational. Anyway, uh, and I'm going to be selling some sets. Uh, I have maybe four TVs that are 90 plus percent done. I'll just give you a quick list. You go back and look at videos. Some of these are years ago. Motorola 12K2. Uh, an RCA 721TS, an Admiral 20X136, and speaking of Motorola's, I do have a couple 7-inch sets. Uh, I think one of the Friday Night Restoration on. Um, I don't need to have multiples of these sets. The Admiral 19A15 in the blonde cabinet I did, I'm on the fence about. It turned out really, really nice. <laughs> But I can't keep everything, so that one might come up for sale too. So here's the deal. Um, if any of you are interested in any of those sets, I'll try to include links to them or put photos up somewhere. 
Well, let me know because if you can make it to the early TV convention in Ohio, we can, you know, we, I can pass along the set to you there. I can transport it to Ohio. Otherwise, some of these sets are too big. I can't ship them. And even the smaller sets, I'm really not crazy about shipping. So either you need to come somewhere in the Chicago land vicinity, or meet up in Ohio, or arrange somebody to pick them up. Um, that's kind of the hassle with selling or trading these larger items. Also, uh, I have some service info. I have duplicates of Beatman's Most Often Needed, and I have a bunch of Sam's photo facts, the ones I was going through in boxes recently. Some of those I have duplicates of. Some of them are just outside the area that I focus on. Um, I'll bring those to the TV convention as well. Um, I'm going to be donating some radio-related stuff to the Antique Radio Club of Illinois. Some sets I am just never going to get to. For example, ages ago, I picked up a really rough Atwater Kent. I want to say it's a 944. This is when they were in their declining years. This is long after their <laughs> the golden era, the, the 20s and 30s. Um, it's kind of noteworthy just because it's <laughs> so far removed from the earlier Atwater Kents, but it, it's so rough that I think it's falling apart. Um, I'm just never going to get to it. I, if I do a full restoration on some of the sets I have that are really rough, I'll never come close to finishing everything I have. So some of these projects that would take many, many, many hours of work and quite frankly, a lot of them are probably more useful as parts than to get fully restored. So anyways, I have some chat. I have some extra stuff I accumulated while working on other projects. For example, I might buy, I might have bought some parts chassis off of eBay to scavenge parts from to complete another project. I still have those chassis. I don't need them anymore, so those will get donated. Some extra speakers I have. Um, it's, one of the reasons, like this, this Mohawk Seminole, you may recall. It's a 20s battery-operated radio. It's in this huge piece of furniture. It's, oh, I don't know, four feet tall, four, four feet wide with compartments for the batteries and log books and uh, whatever. It's like a secretary desk kind of thing with a fold-down top and all that. But in, in the core of it, it's just a little six-tube uh, TRF or super regen radio. Uh, so it's more a piece of furniture than a radio. I... I've had it for years now. I don't have anywhere to put it, and I'm never going to get around to, to fixing it up. But even if I did, it's just not, it's outside the air. I don't do 20s battery radios. That's not my thing. So that's going to get donated. Um, and probably sell off some radios to like a Grinnell, I think it's an 1191, um, a Filco 3710 that are both almost done. Um, but they're, they're console radios. They take up a lot of space. Um, anyways, I need to make room, so that's what's going on with that. I'm also doing some reorganizing down in the basement. So I would made up this tube testing station. Haven't really utilized that as I intended. The workbench never got fully reorganized. Mainly because I got a flood of stuff from a state. And then some other stuff donated. And they just quickly filled up the space. So I've been taking inventory. And mentally, anything that I haven't needed to, to utilize or a box I haven't opened in, say, two years or more, does not need to be down here. <laughs> so some of these spare parts, uh, things have accumulated, uh, books, uh, whatever, whatever. If I haven't used it in years, it doesn't need to be down here. It can go into the garage or into storage or be sold or whatever. So... <laughs> Uh, for example, scopes. I'll probably have four or five scopes down here. I only need one. One really good scope. So, you know, streamline the operation. Uh, finish setting up the workbench. But there's a lot of interesting stuff coming up. So not only are all these projects I've started, um, well, of course we're going to be diving into those, but I also want to try to do more educational, kind of interesting stuff. Uh, for example, I finished a predictor recently and I just blew through and recapped it. I didn't even bother recording any video because it was the same as every other one I've done. However, when I powered it up, there were some issues. So uh, I think it's going to be a good troubleshooting uh, video. And then uh, I fired up the, uh, the Pyramid CRA-1 capacitor 
analyzer. I haven't used that in a long time. We're going to be checking out some caps, talking more about adaptive caps. Uh, so coming up in the very near future, in a particular order, of course there's the Naroko Duo View Protogram slash RCA ET241, the chassis of which is right behind me now. I'm wrapping that up. I'm going to dive into that Westinghouse really quick because as soon as it's done, it can get out of here. Uh, likewise, some predictors, not for the guy in New York, some other ones, um, will be getting done and out of here. Uh, and then, of course, that Emerson, uh, my set. It won't go anywhere, but uh, I think that's going to be a really interesting project. And I got some great help from some of you out there who sent me some photos and reference material of a stock chassis or a um, more modestly restored chassis where all the original parts were still in their original location so that will be a, a wonderful aid to, uh, to help me uh, with that project and I really really want to squeeze in a radio or two and some things like uh, the Mech Trailblazer with the 78 RPM I got the radio working but the phonograph didn't because the cartridge is dead uh, my buddy I believe picked me up one more modern one um, that should work in it, so I want to get back to that too. So a lot of interesting things. Uh, some more stuff from the estate sale. I, I still haven't come close to going through all that. I'm looking at Collins' receiver off in the distance there. I already recorded footage on it. I just haven't gotten around to editing it down. Almost done. Uh, now I want to plug myself a little bit. Um, ages ago, I mentioned a website. I did get the domain BandersonTV.com and there is a website there but it's only in its infancy I started putting in links to um, places you can get parts that I use in predictors like uh, replacement sockets for example I want to put a lot more links because a lot of you have asked me for hey I remember you did a video on this but now I can't find it or ever, have you ever talked about this I have over a thousand videos and they're not really indexed or cataloged in any meaningful way I want to try to organize, at least put links to some of the ones I think that are more interesting or relevant or more educational, uh, and links to sites where I like to buy parts um, or other, other people's websites that I think uh, have a lot of value to them, or online resources to find service info, for example. Uh, I also want to put um, some of my past projects, before and after photos, or links to the video series. And if uh, for customers, this is my, my dream if I ever get there, is to show kind of a timeline of sets of when they arrived, what current state they're at, and links to videos and photos of them. So if, say, you dropped off a set to get restored, you can watch its progress as it goes through the steps. You know exactly where things are at, um, and if I started working on it or not, uh, and then so on, and, and see photos of it. Also want to mention, uh, there's a community tab on my YouTube channel. I post there almost daily. I use it as my personal blog, basically. Uh, I try to post at least one photo every day. I have a big collection of vintage photos. Some are old ads. Some are just family photos around their old TV. It's funny, it's kind of a thing of <laughs> photos of people with their TVs. Back then, TVs cost so much, it was like buying a new car. So, uh, I, don't, I don't know who started this, but somebody realized, hey, a lot of these photos from the 40s, 50s, there's a family around on the holiday, but the TV is it's kind of prominent right there as well. So I started collecting those photos, and I'm starting to share those. And I also have a lot of photos of the early days of TV with experimental equipment and whatnot. So I highly recommend you check out the community tab on my YouTube page. And I'd also like to plug my Patreon page. I've been putting up videos, exclusive videos there. I started doing a thing lately of when I finish a project, I do a sort of a candid little video like this where I talk about the project and what I thought was interesting, what I liked, what I didn't like about it, and so on. And uh, For just a buck a month, you can get access to that. So uh, and I, I'm going to be putting more and more stuff up there. Um, I think that covers everything, as always. Uh, oh, there's one other thing. Um, See, I'm, I'm trying to do this to communicate with you guys, and then I always ask you to leave comments to get the, your feedback. I might dip my toe into doing a live stream. Uh, one reason I haven't is I've watched other people do it, or on TikTok. 
and they're doing their thing. They're working on a project, maybe or whatever, and they have you can clearly tell there's a laptop or something here, and they're getting a flood of comments and thumbs up and icon emoticons flying by. And they're reading that and trying to interact with people. Um, that seems like a huge headache. <laughs> now, I don't have as huge an audience as some of the people I follow do, so maybe it won't be as overwhelming as I think it might be. Um, but I would like to engage in real time with you, because when I do these videos, I just have to kind of remember comments I got in the past or guess as to what you might be interested in. I would really, really like to get more real-time, more engaging feedback from you guys, because all these projects I do, it's just, I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. If there's stuff I'm leaving out or stuff you'd like to you know, focus more on, I really want to know, because I very much want to pass on the knowledge so it doesn't get lost, because a lot of it I picked up over the years from other people on YouTube, from reading magazines, from reading articles, reading restorations, meeting other people in person, and... Well, when I go, it's going to go, because I haven't been writing all this down. Whatever, pretty much these, these videos are all I have and some online um, forum posts I've made. So the more I can get out there, the, the more I, can, I think I can benefit the community. So uh, that's going to be it for now. Uh, as I said, <laughs> leave your comments, and uh, as always, thanks for watching.